So this was a uh, very unusual and unique case that I did in the last um, a little bit here. This was a patient that had a retinal detachment and I repaired him with a buccal vitrectomy uh, and using PFO and normally with PFO you won't end up with a macular fold but in this fellow I guess there must have been enough subretinal fluid left when we drained him um, and he looked completely flat but there was enough subretinal fluid that it uh, went down into the macula and created this really significant macular fold. So I've only had a handful of macular folds in my career, thankfully, but this is the worst. And uh, I always start out on these macular fold cases by peeling the internal limiting membrane. And I just feel like this provides uh, better access into the subretinal space when injecting uh, subretinal fluid with a 39 gauge cannula. And it, it also, I think, at least it precludes there from being a epiretinal membrane present that could cause uh, the fold to persist. So I'm using a 39 gauge cannula and I'm injecting BSS underneath the retina here. And the first problem is, is that the BSS doesn't dissect under the macula, it actually dissects out towards the periphery. And so I'm thinking to myself as I inject this, gosh, how in the world can I get this BSS to go the direction that I want? And so my uh, initial thought is, is okay, these 39 gauge uh, incisions that we're making to inject uh, are small. So let's just try to go in a different location. So I start to inject in a different location, a little bit of hemorrhage there, so I uh, increase our pressure. But uh, basically what ends up happening is, is that this bleb now, goes out into the periphery. So the blebs are not wanting to go in and unfold the macula. And I tried a third time. Now I'm uh, temporal to the phobia, straight temporal here, and all I get is my fluid dissecting into my larger, more peripheral bubble. I decide let's go nasal. So I go uh, inferior nasal here and uh, I get a bubble and once again it does not dissect into the macula instead it starts to head out into the periphery. So after blowing up several of these uh, different blebs and having really no success with anything going into the macula um, I'm left to try and figure out what our best option is for how to drive this large bullous amount of subretinal fluid into the macula. Um, and so what I end up doing, I try left-handed, thinking maybe a different approach would allow this to dissect more into the macula, and you can see that it just doesn't. So what I figure is, is that I can go to air, and that under air, the fluid will pool posteriorly and give us a good chance to detach this macula, and therefore hopefully unfold the macula during the case. And sure enough, um, it does move the fluid more posteriorly and kind of stretches um, some of that retina and starts to unfold the macular fold. And so we dry very copiously and give it a few minutes. And then we decide that we're going to put back in perfluoron. So we go back to fluid and re inject perfluoron uh, to try and help move and stretch the retina back into a more uh, normal uh, appearance, as we can see here. And we do this a couple different times, and sure enough, the subretinal fluid eventually does move across the macula and detach the macula and start to uh, unfold that area. Here we can see we're going back to the fluid for the first time. And then what we'll do is we will uh, re-inject PFO. And so it's just kind of back and forth between uh, PFO in the eye uh, to push the fluid out and then uh, air in the eye to encourage uh, the fluid to move more posteriorly, just working to try and stretch the retina and unfold the macula. And here you can now see the fluid goes directly underneath the macula and is really stretching out that macula quite nicely. And this is what we had hoped to accomplish with our initial injection. And in hindsight, if I thought about this sooner, I would have never made the uh, other injection sites with the 39 gauge. I would have just gone to air and let gravity uh, do the rest. So if you ever encounter a situation where 
the flu goes the wrong direction, just go to air and the air will pool posteriorly. So now we've got our macula all up and it's stretching out this macular fold, but I've only partially peeled the internal limiting membrane. So I really wanna finish that ILM peeling. And so we're gonna finally go back in and we're gonna inject some uh, PFO over this area to push uh, this retina, the subretinal fluid out towards the periphery. And I had a unique opportunity to talk with several really excellent South American retina specialists and they do a lot of peeling under PFO and I learned a lot about how to peel under PFO and, and things like that. Um, and so this time I decide after a third stretching technique here that we'll go through really quickly, that I'm gonna to start to attempt to uh, peel this patient's internal limb membrane fully underneath the perfluoron, which should hopefully make it much, much easier. Um, now I'm kind of stroking the surface of the retina here because there is a little bit of residual uh, fold and this is under fluid uh, or under air with the fluid in the macula. Now I stain again with ICG. I'm gonna put in the PFO and this will give me a really good, stable surface to finish my peeling. And I found that I really do love peeling under PFO. The key to successful peeling under PFO is it's almost like a rexus where you fold uh, the ILM back on top of itself. This is, by the way, sped up uh, to two times the normal speed. Uh, but to keep that ILM folded back over on itself, and to continue to drag it in the plane of the retina underneath the PFO. And the nice thing about peeling under PFO is that you can get some extremely, extremely large and broad peels. Uh, and so it really does an unbelievably beautiful job. And I've peeled several other cases under perfluoron and I've been very happy with it. And it's something that I've added to my armamentarium. Here I'm just kind of stroking the retinal surface where the fold is just to get out any little final bits of uh, retinal fold that are present. I created draining retinotomy because the patient was attached um, before I injected the subretinal fluid and I'm gonna drain through this draining retinotomy and be sure to drain this patient absolutely meticulously flat because we don't wanna see this come back. Laser that area and I'm happy to say that the patient has done really well. Vision has improved from 2400 with the macular fold to now at last visit about 2040. Thank you so much for watching.